It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Beloved. I'm, si- I'm, si- I'm sitting there doing the podcast with Andrew. That's why I answered. You ain't talked to Andrew Schultz in a minute. Yo, Tex, what up, man? Andrew, we don't fuck with white people. Yo, <laughs> that's fucked up. I've been sending you nudes. Hey, Andrew, what's going on, man? What's going on, beloved? We sitting there doing the podcast, shooting the shit. Plug that in. It's going to go. You can hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Oh shit, so you can hear me in the mic and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're good. All right, this is it, Tax Tone. Tax Tone, uh. Tax Tone, say hi to the people. You are plugged in. You are on Brilliant Idiots right now. How you been, man? Who's the new girlfriend, man? Oh, Who's man. I got, a, I got a girl, man. It's pretty serious, dude. It's pretty serious. I might, I might have to, I might have to lock it down for a <laughs> he lifetime. She's from Nigeria. She's from Nigeria, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you, man. I, mean, I took over the land and just pulverized it for all the natural resources for you to just go back and give back to the Nigerian community. I'm pretty sure we're happy. Like, hey, bro, you know what I'm about? Niger, you know, and SARS. <laughs> Shut the fuck <laughs> up. How you been, Andrew? How you doing, man? Man, I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to avoid the bookings. Avoid what? The bookings? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tax, what you see this week that interests you, bro? What you said? What, what you I see this week that interests me? Yeah. I ain't see shit that interests me this week, man. This shit is a whole bunch of bullshit. The Supreme Court is a whole bunch of bullshit. It's like, who gives a fuck about the Supreme Court? Is Supreme gonna put out a new collection at this point? <laughs> it's like, this shit is boring. This whole country is just going up in the flames. Thinking about just moving to Russia. <laughs> you want, you're going to Russia, dude? Why Russia? Listen, Vladimir said he already got the kill. I don't know why we neglecting this man. He did He's say only the, lied a couple thousand times. The president's lied way more than that. Russia definitely said they got the vaccine already, and it's ready for international use. And it's it's ready. They got, come on, we use Russian vodka, why we can't use their they medicine? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad point. I think we need to give, I think we need to give Vladimir a, a chance before we give Trump a chance with his vaccination. Vlad, he's been kind of quiet, hasn't he? He's been quiet lately, bro. I don't think he's trying to bring yeah, attention Vladimir to himself. He's being quiet. He got all his hackers just getting busy right now. He's Put got mad proud boy propaganda on, on Twitter land and shit. Hey, are there some proud boys in jail? Who the proud boys? Yeah, there's, there's one proud boy in my house right now. He Muslim. What? <laughs> yeah, nigga's a white Muslim, white Muslim neo Nazi. You know you got you know you got to turn Muslim for protection in jail. So he's like a um, he got like neo Nazi tattoos, but he Muslim. Really? I thought you turned Muslim for the food. <laughs> There's not that many white people on, like on Rikers Island, so you know, like maybe like if he go to another state, then he'll be all right. He can go back to his natural habitat. You know, what I mean, they can talk about the coal mines and stuff like that. <laughs> but you know, ain't no coal mines in New York City, so he don't got nobody to talk to him. So he ended up taking the shahada, to turn a Muslim for protection. The Muslims take anybody in New York. You can be a rapist, child molester. They'll just snatch you right on up. Just put on a kufi and you're safe. Well, that's the whole point of the Muslim faith, though, right? Like, they're supposed to take the worst of people and turn them into the best of people. So that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. But in New York, it's just a, it's just a kufi. That's it's a kufi. They, as soon as they leave, they take the kufi off. They go right back to look searching for child porn on the deep web. <laughs> Who's the strongest in the jails now? Like, is the Bloods, the Crips, the Muslims? What is it? What you said? What's the what? Who's the strongest out of like in the in the jails now? Well, in New York City, it's always like the Bloods, but like even the Bloods are like crackheads too. You know what I mean? It's like crackhead Bloods. You got crackhead Crips in here. You know what I mean? Like everybody's on crack. You know what I mean? In here, like motherfuckers is on all kinds of exotic drugs. You know what I mean? Everybody's stressed out. People, parents dying from Corona. You know what I mean? Like. Nobody knows when they're getting out because the court system is just shut down. Everybody just being held up on their cases. So people in here is like really stressed out right now. Damn. And they don't, I bet you they don't have y'all doing no type of mental health 
you know, uh, uh, therapy or nothing? I've been trying to see mental health for a couple of months now because I don't even know if I need to see them, but I'm like, maybe I, I need to talk to somebody because I don't talk to people in here. So what I had realized a minute ago when I started podcasting that that was my therapy, me talking to people, like just getting shit out that I was keeping inside, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, one of, so, your, one of your best episodes to me was when you had that therapist on. I can't remember the young lady's name. Oh, yeah, uh, Maya Pettiford. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, she was a, a great therapist. Yeah, she kind of made me like therapy after that because, like, speaking to her about certain things made me want to speak more. That's why I've been trying to see it, like, trying to see mental health since I got here. Like, no one cares. Like, it's just like, okay, yeah, we'll put you on the list. And then you'd be like, yo, when's the, like, set date? Like, I just asked recently. I think they said that the next date for me was, like, December 20th. I was like, well, by that time, I might just decide to kill myself. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, do y'all even care? Damn, I mean, they should take those type of, uh, they should take those type of, of uh, what's the word? Threats? Not, I don't want to call it a threat, request. Yeah, they should take those type of requests serious. You know what it is, is that what I've realized is that I didn't really realize how, how crazy mental health was until I like listened to you, and then I've seen the people that's in here. Mental health is definitely a serious issue. Mm. Like, there's people in here that have a lot, a lot of problems, you know what I mean? And you really don't realize it. Like, it's people in here that talk to the wall. It's people in here that don't talk at all. It's a guy in here that, that just said that they indicted him for killing his family. He's like, yo, I don't know what they're talking about. Like, I love my family. And you can tell that he's genuinely serious. Like, he's actually confused about what he's being charged for, you know what I mean? Mm. And just seeing that made me realize, like, yo, mental health is, like, literally a serious issue. They actually need more mental health doctors in than anything. The thing is, is that they be having maybe two, and then they get alternated to other buildings or rankers, so you only can see them on specific days. The programs need to be a little bit bigger here. Like, there's a lot of, like, bullshit that goes on on Rikers Island. Like, this place is, like, goofy. Like, the building I'm in right now in Manhattan, they talking about shutting it down, talking about the coronavirus spread. They supposed to pile us all up in three, four buildings. I said that shit don't make sense. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't it be smart to separate us than to keep us piled up on top of each other? You know what I mean? They don't give a shit though. But like, but DOC don't really um. They don't do. Ain't too much sense at the hierarchies of the Department of Corrections. You know what I mean? The sad, like, the sad part about it is, man, these these those those establishments should be correctional facilities. They should be places where people actually go and. You know, become better versions of themselves. Mm. So, so, so mental health requests should be granted. You know mm. what I mean? They should have physical fitness in the gyms. They should be getting y'all diet right. Like, why put you in an environment that's just gonna make you crazier? Mm. You, you know what's the saddest thing about it? The people that actually really want to correct themselves in there. It's a large amount. They really want to go home and do right, and they want to get jobs. They want to learn trades. They want to change everything about themselves. The thing is, is that it's really no this is, They don't have any programs. You get let out of jail. As soon as you get let out, you, you're trying to do the right thing for a little while, but then something that might interest you, you can't get hired there because it's a part of the law that they don't have to hire a felon. That's mm. a part of prison reform that people need to take more serious there. They should allow these Fortune 500 companies to hire felons and get them through training in jail, get them the proper training, and then when they come home, put them through like a probation period that if you do correctly for a year straight, then you can earn the same pay that the person who went to college did because some of these people are highly intelligent. They just were in bad financial situations. Like, I know you remember that Jay-Z ball where he said, we doing crime because we not doing fine. That's right. 95% of the people in there, mm. they not doing crime because they just want to be doing dumb shit. They doing crime because they, they're fucked up. You know what I mean? Damn, so, yeah, man. That's the, one of the biggest part of prisons reform that people need to look at is like really actually Giving pro, why, why wouldn't these companies, if they gave them some type of tax break to hire these felons, they would do it. Everything is the bottom line for these country, these companies. So if mm. they give them some type of tax break to take 300 felons that got trained on how to do a specific job to come home and work for them, and then they do a probational period for a year and a half, however long it is, and they don't get paid as much as the person who actually went to school for it, and then after the probation period is done, they actually get that amount that they deserve. They should do that because I'm telling you, the majority of people will actually do it. They just don't know any route. They don't know anything else but what they know. 
Nobody's putting the education in their face. They come in and drop books on people and leave and say that they did something right. But if nobody's there to actually tell these people what these books are for, what they could learn from this book, what they could do to change their neighborhood, what they could do to open a business, they're not going to read it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, and a lot of things is a lot of the 40 year olds in here, they act just like the 19 year olds. So it's hard to tell them apart. You know what I mean? So it's just like I said, if they don't have the correct services in here to like change, they don't really care about change. They need the rate of recidivism to be high so people can come back and, and keep the fucking prison system going. You know, it's people that are sitting in their country homes right now, they're sitting in Marfa's Vineyard that's getting paid for me being on Rikers Island. So, you know, they need they need people here. Rikers, um, Rikers is a private prison? Mm. What would you say? It's, no, a pro- it's, a, um, it's a um city prison. Okay. It's a city prison, but it's like funded by the feds. It's like weird shit, you know what I mean? But like, you know, the commissioner and like the people who really run the jails, they don't even they don't come here. They sit in their houses in, in Rhode Island, you know what I mean, and dictate what goes on down here. They hire a couple black people, give them like captain jobs and deputy jobs. They still don't run the show. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just some white person that went to school and doesn't know anything about prison that just read something about criminal whatever in college, you know what I mean? Um, criminal behavior, and that's it. Like, you know what I mean? Criminal behavior is based on the circumstances that you put people in. You know what I mean? If they put Andrew Schultz right now and they take everything from Andrew Schultz and, he has, and you give him an apartment in Brownsville, Andrew Schultz might be folk next week. You know what I mean? So Possibly. It's like... Our, yeah. our, our Brownsville could be gentrified. Yeah, you guys oh, oh, might yeah. be drinking you know, oat milk you know lattes. I mean? Because he might have a he might have a certain amount of intellect where he know what to do to get other money. He could teach other people. But the thing is that in the community they don't know. Even if you if you go to school, public school in our neighborhood, they teach us the same things. They teach us in jail. When you go up north and um in the state, they teach you electrician, um plumbing, carpentry, which is good trades, but they teach the same thing in the schools in the neighborhood. So if you're teaching the prisoners the same thing there, you're not teaching nobody how to own the company. You know, there's some people that's not manual laborers, so they wanna they might be, you know, mentally strong when they could do other things and they're not getting a chance to do that. They're not giving us all the opportunities and different possibilities to do something different. You know what I mean? It's just, yo, these are your five things. You're gonna you're gonna go rap. You're gonna go be a comedian. You're gonna go do this. Or it's over for you, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Or you're gonna play ball, run up and down the court. You know what I mean? So, it's, it's not too many places to go for. So it's like, you know, it's like Big said, either you swing a crack rock or you got a wicked jump shot. It's like three more places you could go now because of the internet. Like, you know, maybe you could go be funny or something on Instagram and go get a check or something. But besides that, it's not too much besides entertainment. You know what I mean? It's not too many black academics. Look at the United States of America. We lack engineers. This country shouldn't lack engineers. This is why I ain't shit made in the U.S. no more because why the fuck should you have to pay that much to be an engineer? Y'all should be teaching engineering for free in this country. Now we got to go to India and China to go snatch foreign students up and to teach them. And then they come over here, get the education, learn everything, and they get back to their country. Now it's made in India and China. But you can it's teach a- some of these Negroes on Rikers Island how to be an engineer or, or upstate New York or wherever it might be. You know what I mean? But, but they don't, they don't, it, 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 there's no money. There's no money. There's, there's no money in rehabilitation. Exactly. They need the rate of recidivism to always be high. They need people to come back and forth to jail. So that's the issue. You know? Damn, yo. That was the best stay out of jail PSA I heard in a yeah, long motherfucking bro. time. I'm not going to jail, man. Yeah, I, I hear a lot about reform and I respect reform all the way. And another thing that I feel that they lack is like when they talk about violence, they act like people that's violent can't change or people that's violent didn't end up in circumstances where they had to be violent. Sometimes violence has to be reciprocated so violence don't happen to you. You know what I mean? So a lot of times they they say nonviolent offenders. I'd be like, yo, but what about the guy who they, they ran in his house in New York because New York don't even have laws for that. Somebody can run in your house in New York and you bust his head and you still going to jail for it. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't have to stand your ground law. stand your ground and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. They don't have... Like, they don't even have self-defense. Thank you, you for using security. Goodbye. Yeah.